Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. We've got some amazing community posts and something great for all of you Excel folks. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Rathi Kamasani has got a blog post looking at how you can automate buttons or at least give that illusion of animation for those items. She got this inspiration off of the WHO site and what she walks through is creating those buttons, combining it with like on hover effects, as well as introducing some special characters to take it to the next level. I really like this. It's a great way to play with the items that are inside of Power BI or Tinker as I refer to it now and to take it to the next level to help people really get absorbed into your report and see items that make them think eh, this is is this power bi is it not power bi and just giving that app like experience which i really like if this is something that you're interested in, be sure to check out the blog post links down below parker stevens over at bi elite has got a video for you looking at how do you actually paginate a power bi report you may be sitting and thinking to yourself, wait, aren't paginated reports different from Power BI reports? And the answer there is yes. However, what he's doing is actually setting up to where you can page through different data. So think of like a table. If you only wanted to show 10 rows at a time, actually setting that up in a way that you can actually cycle through those pages of a table instead of it being the complete list. This may not be for everyone. And honestly, if you are really looking for that kind of experience, paginated reports inside of Power BI are definitely the best way to go. But if you're in a pinch or you've got a specific use case that you need to do this inside of a Power BI report, check out the video. Parker's got you covered and walks you through how you could potentially set this up. Again, links down below in the description, including links to all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. So go check it out. Reza Rad over at Radicat has been doing some live streams uh, just weekly with different folks, basically just presentations that are hosted on the Radicat channel. The one that happened last week was with Phil Seamark and Phil walked through distinct counts inside of Power BI and how they work, just explaining if you're trying to wrap your head around what they are actually doing. And then he walks through different techniques with using distinct count. What I love about this also is Phil looks at how do you actually do this when we're talking about really large data and that may not apply to all of you, but looking at things like approximate distinct count, pre-aggregated tables, and just looking at different techniques for using distinct count for different scenarios, which is amazing. If you've been looking for more information about distinct counts, or if you've been struggling with wrapping your heads around it, definitely check out this video. Links down below, and I'll have a little card item up above for you. All right, for all you Excel folks, this is a big deal. There was a blog post that came out in May that talked about the upcoming features inside of Excel that incorporate Power BI. So this is the data types inside of Excel and the ability to connect to a Power BI data set, whether it's certified or whatnot, and use that with a pivot table, which was amazing. However, when this was released inside of the Office Insiders, the other requirement that came with this was you had to have an E5 license on the Office 365 side. And there's a lot of folks that don't. So you may be sitting there wondering, Adam, why are you even talking about this? This was back in May and it's E5 and I don't even care about that. There was a comment that was made on this post on Thursday of last week from Carlos Atiro. And Carlos mentioned that this has been modified to now be available for any commercial Office 365 users that have an Excel license, removing that E5 requirement. And I, I know this made the rounds on Twitter last week and it kind of exploded a little bit, but this is great, right? This lowers the barrier for entry. You don't need to have an E5 license to actually take advantage of these capabilities. However, it's still a preview item. So you need to be on the Office Insiders and the comment that Carlos made in the comment, comment on the comment, is that this is still rolling out. So it may not be immediately there. So give it a week or two, maybe see. I, I'm not familiar with the rollout cadence on the Excel side. So I don't know how fast that'll actually make it to you if you have the Insiders item enabled but definitely be on the lookout for it. This is a great option inside of Excel to take advantage of what's inside of Power BI. There's a blog post on the Power BI blog from Chris Finland talking about Power BI Report Server. So way back when he mentioned that the release cadence for Power BI Report Server would be January, May, and September. Well, September is pretty much here 
And this blog post talks about the fact that the release of Power BI Report Server, instead of it being in September, it's going to be in, in October. And what I love about this is just the transparency that's here and just keeping folks up to date. And the reason why, really this has to do with the enhanced metadata option inside of Power BI Desktop. There's some extra work effort to get this to work inside of Power BI Report Server. So the decision was either wait till October or you'd have to wait till the next release in January. So they opted to just push it a month, which I think is the right thing. And check out the blog post for all the details that Chris gives you on this item. And again, loving the transparency there. All right, I wanna hand this over to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned. Maybe it was something I didn't. Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to hit that big thumbs up button, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always, from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome, and we'll see you in the next video.